Chapter Six of the Automobile Girls at Newport by Laura Crane. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. What happened the first day? The car flew along by sunny meadows and farms. New York was the first day's goal. Barbara, Ruth said to her next door neighbor, you are hereby appointed royal geographer and guide extraordinary to this party here is the route book it will be up to you to show us which roads we are to take it is a pretty hard job as i well know from experience but then honors come hard you don't need to worry to-day i know this coast trip into new york as well as i know my a b c's i have often come along this way with father let's have a perfectly beautiful time in new york we'll make aunt sally chaperone us while we do the town or at least a part of it have you ever been to a roof garden barbara's eyes danced it didn't sound quite right somehow a roof garden but then they were out for experiences and miss sally wouldn't let them do anything really wrong ruth glanced out of the corner of her eye at barbara miss stuart was a good little chauffeur who never allowed her attention to be distracted from running her car no matter what was being talked of around her nor how much she was interested but she couldn't help laughing at barbara's expression it told so plainly all that was going on inside her head i do assure you miss barbara thurston that a roof garden may be a fairly respectable thing quite well suited to entertaining without shocking either miss sally stuart or her four charming protégés ruth called back aunt sally will you take us up on the waldorf roof to-night you know we are going to stay at the waldorf hotel girls father said we might enjoy the experience and it would be all right with aunt sally for chaperone grace pinched molly's arm to express her rapture and that little maiden simply gasped with delight it was molly and barbara of the two sisters who had the greatest yearning for wealth and society and the beautiful clothes and the wonderful people that she believed went along with it barbara was an outdoor girl who loved tennis and all the sports and could swim like a fish an artist who spent his summers at kingsbridge once called her a brown sea gull when he saw her little brown body dart off the great pier to dive deep into the water aunt sally had been taking a brief catnap before ruth's question and awakened in high good humour why yes children she answered it will be very pleasant to go up on the roof to-night after we have had our baths and our dinners i am quite disposed to let you do just what you like so long as you behave yourselves grace carter pressed aunt sally's fat hand as a message of thanks grace was aunt sally's favorite among ruth's friends she is a quiet ladylike girl who does not do unexpected things that get on one's nerves miss sally had once explained to ruth now aunt sally ruth had it protested i know i do get on your nerves sometimes but you know you need me to stir you up think how dull you would be without me and aunt sally had answered with unexpected feeling i would be very dull indeed my dear the girls were full of their plans for the evening that is why ruth told us each to put a muslin dress in our suitcases ruth are you going to think up a fresh surprise every day it's just so splendid molly spoke in a tone of such fervent emotion that every one in the car laughed i don't suppose i can manage a surprise every day mullikins ruth called back over her shoulder but i mean to think up as many as i possibly can we are going to have the time of our lives you know and something must happen to make it all this time the car had been flying faster than the girls could talk this is going some commented ruth laughing when they came into lakewood ruth slowed up as she had promised her father not to go any faster than the law allowed i cross my heart and body dad she had said 
think of four lovely maidens and their handsome duenna languishing in jail instead of flying along the road to newport honest injun father i'll read every automobile sign from here to jehoshaphat if we ever decide to travel that way in lakewood ruth drove her car around the wonderful pine-shaded lake it's in a winter resort she explained to her companions nearly all the cottages and hotels are closed in the summer but i wanted you to have a smell of the pines it will give you strength for the rest of the trip silence fell on the party as they skimmed out of lakewood after so much excitement it was pleasant to look at things without having to talk molly had begun once in a while to tap the lunch basket with her foot the fresh air and the long ride had made her desperately hungry she really couldn't remember having eaten any breakfast in the excitement of getting off but nobody said Phew. she felt she was the youngest member of the party and should not make suggestion before miss sally ruth turned into a narrow lane a signpost pointed the way to the deserted village oh dear me sighed molly to herself why are we going to a deserted village just as we are dying of hunger ruth said never a word she passed some tumble-down old cottages of a century ago then an old iron foundry and drew up with a great flourish before an old stone house green with moss and ivy and fragrant with a lovely odor of cooking there were little tables set out on the lawn and on the old-fashioned veranda and soon the party was reveling in lunch i didn't know food could be so heavenly whispered molly in bab's ear when they were back in the car for grace had begged for a seat by the chauffeur for the afternoon trip soon ruth left the country behind and came out on the seacoast road that ran through long branch deal beach monmouth and seabright from carriages and other automobiles and along the promenades everyone smiled at the crimson car full of happy laughing girls ruth was driving in her best fashion making all the speed she could with the thought of town fifty miles or more ahead it is a sight to see quoth barbara the way the fairy princess handles her chariot of fire it was a little after four o'clock when the car boarded the staten island ferry and finally crossed to the new york shore you see bab molly said trying to stuff her curls under her motor cap and to rub the dust from her rosy cheeks with a tiny pocket handkerchief as they sped up broadway i might be dreadfully embarrassed arriving at the waldorf looking the way i do if i were not in a motor-car but riding in an automobile makes one feel so awfully swell that nothing matters isn't it lovely just to feel important for once you know it is bab and you needn't say no it's silly to pretend miss sally was again on the border of slumberland so that molly and barbara could have their low-voiced talk dear ruth no i have never even been to new york before asked molly i hope i won't seem very green about things you must tell me if i do bab but bab only laughed and shook her head you are a foolish baby she said two respectful porters at the waldorf helped a dusty crumpled party out of the big red touring car the girls a little dazed followed miss sally through a maze of palms and servants in livery with handsomely dressed people strolling through the halls until their suite of rooms which mr stewart had engaged by telegraph a few days before was reached the three rooms adjoined only separated by white tile bathrooms miss sally naturally had a room to herself and it was decided that ruth and grace were to sleep together leaving the sisters to themselves isn't it too beautiful sighed molly standing in the midst of their luxurious chamber gazing around at the single brass beds with their rose-colored draperies and the ivory striped satin wall paper garlanded in pink flowers ruth and grace were equally fine in a room decorated in blue and even in the waldorf miss sally's taste seemed to have been consulted as her room was in her favorite violet shade in some mysterious way the crumpled muslin dresses were taken downstairs by a maid and came back smooth and fresh even miss sally's elaborate chiffon gown looked as though it had just come home from the modistes oh ruth ruth molly exclaimed as the four girls made their way to the dining-room miss sally in the lead i didn't know there could be such a magnificent place in the world as this i don't know what i can ever do to repay you except to love you and be grateful my whole life long 
well i am sure that is all the gratitude i should ever want molly laughed ruth but wait until you see the houses at newport all eyes near the door turned to see the little automobile party enter the palm room miss sally swept ahead in her black lace and chiffon looking very handsome and impressive barbara and grace came next barbara with her red-brown hair breaking into willful curves and waves her big brown eyes glowing with pleasure and the deep red showing in her olive cheeks grace with her look of refinement and gentle dignity the blonde maidens came in last ruth's bright gold hair and fresh coloring showed to best advantage in a dainty white muslin and lace frock she was half a head taller than dainty molly who looked like a flower with her yellow curls gathered in a soft cluster at the back of her neck and tied with a black velvet ribbon on the waldorf roof miss stewart and the girls sat under an orange tree hung in some mysterious way with golden oranges the whole place was decorated with palms and evergreens and beautiful flowers the soft shaded yellow lights rivalled the moonlight that glowed above it's like the enchanted garden in the french fairy story isn't it miss sally where the flowers and the fruits bloomed all year round whispered barbara who sat next to their chaperone miss sally smiled very kindly at her enthusiasm i expect it is but i am afraid i have forgotten the story it has been a long time remember barbara since fairies and i have had much to say to each other barbara blushed i am not so young as all that miss sally but i have never forgotten the fairy tales i read when i was a little girl though i must confess i like the boys stories better i just love adventures and barbara's eyes shone in a little while the music commenced and she forgot everything but that molly was differently occupied what she liked best was to gaze around her at the women in their jewels and wonderful gowns just across from her on the other side of the aisle was a rarely beautiful woman in a white lace gown with a string of pearls round her throat and a pearl and diamond butterfly that glowed and sparkled in her hair molly was so fascinated by her beauty that she couldn't help watching this stranger and even overhearing a little of her conversation it isn't exactly eavesdropping molly apologized to herself because i don't know them and they can never possibly know me so nobody noticed but molly that when the woman gave a laughing toss of her head in answer to some question from her husband who sat back of her that the beautiful jewelled butterfly slipped softly out of her hair fell into the softer lace folds of her gown and then down down to the floor the little girl waited half a minute no one else had noticed the loss at any time an usher might come down the aisle and crush the exquisite jewel molly forgot herself and her shyness if it had been barbara she would not have minded but molly was timid before strangers she slipped quietly across the aisle and picked up the butterfly i beg your pardon her soft voice explained but i saw this fall from your hair and as you did not notice it i was afraid it might be crushed the lovely woman turned in surprise it is just as well to call her the lovely lady now for that was molly's name for her ever afterwards my dear she said i am very grateful to you how could i have failed to see it i am especially obliged to you because i am very fond of this ornament molly blushed rosy red as the people close to them had observed what had happened and were watching her as she tried to slip over to her seat the lady reached out and gave the child's hand a gentle squeeze of thanks glancing across as she did so to see what friends the little girl was with and so caught ruth stewart's eye the intermission came at this minute why ruth stewart molly to her surprise heard her friend's name called in a low voice and ruth came across to them it's miss cartwright she said i am so pleased i didn't suppose you would remember me of course i remember you ruth mrs cartwright protested it has been only two years since i saw you at my own wedding in chicago my memory is surely longer than that isn't that your aunt miss stewart mrs cartwright moved across the aisle to speak to miss sally and to introduce her husband when they had shaken hands mrs cartwright asked may i know what you are doing in this part of the world at this season 
I am playing chaperone to my madcap niece and her three friends who are doing an automobile trip to Newport without a man. Ruth is her own chauffeur, Miss Sally explained, laughing. How jolly of you, Ruth, and how clever. I am so glad you are going to Newport. Did you know my summer place is down there? I am only in town for a day or two. My husband had to come on business, and I am with him. We shall be motoring home soon, and may pass you if you are to take things slowly. Why not join me at New Haven? My husband's brother is a junior at Yale, and we've promised to stop there for a day. There is a dance on at Alumni Hall. I'd be too popular for words if I could take you four pretty girls along with me. Ruth turned to her aunt with glowing eyes we did want to see the college dreadfully she said i have never seen a big eastern university we didn't dream of knowing anybody who would show us around wouldn't it be too much for you to have us all on your hands certainly not said mrs cartwright but a most decided pleasure i shall meet you in new haven say day after to-morrow and i'll telegraph to-night to my brother whose name is donald cartwright by the way to expect us the music was about to begin again but before mrs cartwright went over to her seat she put her hand on molly's curls i must see this little girl often at newport then i can thank her better for saving my lovely butterfly for me i hope to make all of you have a beautiful time she put the jewel into her hair again and molly looked at it thoughtfully she was to know it again some day under stranger circumstances End of chapter six